Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. Now, as most of you will probably be aware, um, as good as my greenhouse is, we do have a slight problem, and that, that's with the easy access and egress of slugs. Now, I hate slugs. There's no redeeming feature. I don't care what important role they play within the ecosystem. I hate them. I absolutely hate them, and I think most orchid growers would agree. Now, it's not that I... I, I would just like them not to be around anymore, okay? Especially not in my greenhouse, okay? Um, I've got a small gap, basically, that, which runs around the base of the greenhouse. Um, in the past, I've tried sealing it up to no, no, no real avail. It hasn't really worked. So what's happened is I still get um, the odd small slug. They're not very big. They're only about the size of my fingernail, but they're in here. Um, and they have caused some significant damage to my orchids, uh, which we're going to have a look at now. And that is just not on. Uh, that's, you can see some of the damage there, especially the real fleshy plants, the dendrobium, uh, the phalaenopsis, just completely and utterly munched. Um, and they're only tiny as well. It's really frustrating. So I come out here most evenings, I find the odd one. Um, I smote them onto the floor before smiting them yet again with my foot until they are nothing. But yet they keep coming back like an unstoppable army of cephalopod knobheads. Um, so, what I've tried before in the past is I've tried to seal up the bottom of the greenhouse. It hasn't really worked. It was a bit of a. It, it, what, it's not adequate. It, need, it needs a better, uh, a better attempt at that. So I'm going to have to try do that with the rest of today. Now the mo main means of controlling slugs in, in, in a gardener is to use slug pellets. Okay. Now I'm not. I'm not adverse to using these. I've used them around my alliums and my certainly around my hostas in the garden and. Um, they work really, really well. Um, you know, they work an absolute treat. But the, the downside with these is the chemicals they contain it can be really, really dangerous for uh, like birds because obviously slugs being low down in the food chain, they get eaten by things like blackbirds and stuff. And uh, if the slugs have died because um, because of ingesting these, that then enters the ecosystem. It makes the the animals sick. The animals die. Yada yada yada. So the, it, these. A sort of like a last resort. I don't. They're not great for the environment. Um, so, uh, and also they, they leave like a blue mess all over the place. So I certainly didn't want to put them in the greenhouse because uh, it just makes it. Uh, it's unsightly and looks a bloody mess. And how are you going to put it around mounted orchids? I'm not going to like sew these onto the surface of the orchid mounds. So I have to take the fight to the slugs. Now the slugs are basically primarily nocturnal. I did find one out here the other day which was munching on my epidendrum which got slaughtered on the uh, paving slabs below me. Um, so most of them live in the soil. So what I've got here is I've got about this much thickness of, um, of well less than that, about that much gravel, uh, a layer of geomembrane and then it's just bare soil. And a lot of these slugs will live down in amongst the gravel um, and basically next to the soil. Um, so that's where we've got to take the fight to. Now, I wanted to look at sort of a biologically friendly or an environmentally friendly um, uh, option for controlling this. And so I got in touch of a company and yes, they were kind enough to send me a free packet of this. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put a link to their uh, website down below in the description. Uh, and they're a company called Nematodes Direct, okay. Because uh, I was specifically after this product called Nema Slug. Okay, now what it is is I'm no, I'm not an expert on uh, soil biota, but basically it's a um, a strain of beneficial nematodes. They're like little worms that live in the soil, uh, and um, they're basically parasitic to slugs, to slugs and other and some snails as well. They basically infect the slug. Uh, proliferate within the body of the slug, the slug dies, um, and then as the, the, the slug body sort of like starts to decompose, these um, procreate within inside it and they explode out of it. So you're basically building an ecosystem of beneficial nematodes which are parasitic to slugs. And because we're sort of on chalky soil here, there just seems to be so many slugs. 
And they're like huge. They're like absolutely, and some of them are like, you know, like twice the size of my thumb and they sort of rove around outside, almost as if they make some sort of audible noise as they march around my, my, around my garden. So, what, so Nematodes Direct sent me a packet of this for free. I've also ordered a packet from them as well um, because you're supposed to use it um, sort of as, as, a, um, as a series of reapplications basically to keep this, um, this beneficial nematode within the, uh, within the soil um, in your garden. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to get all of this out everything it's gonna it's due for a spring clean anyway and i've got a few bits of maintenance to do to the greenhouse so i'm certainly going to get everything on the floor out of the greenhouse i'm going to dilute this stuff and i'm going to water it into the soil uh, and see how much of uh, an impact that has i'm also because it's quite mild at the moment i'm also going to spread it all around the green around the garden as well it's not a very big garden back here but uh, this stuff this pack treats up to 40 meters squared and it lasts up to six weeks so it says in the package here um, so that should more than cover the, uh, the 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 back garden if i just read 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 what it says on the back so it says nemo slug controls all common species of small to medium sized slugs Start your control early and you will be able to target the young slugs growing under the ground before they do any damage. So that's great. So obviously what it's saying is the cold weather, eggs are laid in the soil where they remain dormant until the weather, the temperature increases, which is what, unfortunately, in the greenhouse here, it never gets below about 14 degrees centigrade. So it's just like a, it, it's, it's basically a buffet for slugs. So uh, that's why I'm going to put them down in the greenhouse and out and around it. Um, so. And uh, because it's live, obviously, you can't freeze it. You've got to keep it in the fridge. So it's just been sat in the fridge since I got it, like, last week. Uh, I've been waiting for some time uh, to do it. You've got to put it down in dull conditions. So it's not, because obviously it's waterborne. So you mix it up with water, depending on how, what the dilution rates are. Put it in a watering can, watering it in. But it needs to be on a damp, dull day when it's humid, because otherwise it will just evaporate off really quickly and the, the nematodes won't get washed down into the soil. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring it up to the camera. We'll have a look at what it looks like in the packet. Okay, so that's what the packet looks like. And then inside it's like a cellophane sealed little pot with this like dust inside it. This so it actually comes with a use by date because obviously this it's actually got a living, uh, living animal inside it. So that's what it looks like. What I'll do is I'll clear all the stuff out of the greenhouse. I think it comes with a set of directions in the actual case in there. So there's certainly some text written inside it. So we'll open it up and have a look at it in a bit. Now, it's very kind of them to send, uh, to send a, a packet of this for free. And um, I guess we'll have to have a look and see how, it's, uh, see how it works over the next sort of like six weeks. Um, so what I'll do is I'll clean the greenhouse out and we'll go ahead and uh, apply this. Okay, so I've cleared everything out of the greenhouse. Just pan over there. That's empty. It's had a bit of an air as well. It's the first time it's been properly open since uh, since you know the beginning of winter. Um, the things you're going to need for this, okay. So it says we have to dissolve the entire contents of the pack in a bucket containing four liters of water to create a stock solution. One of that bucket over there. That's usually got my orchid water in it. It'll get a good clean out after this once we've used it. Um, that's got four litres of, of soft rain water in it, which has been in the greenhouse. I measured it out using the, um, the markings on the side of the watering can, so that's pretty much near as damn it, four, four litres of water in there. Next, we need to stir vigorously and immediately, so we've got all of this basically is going in that. Um, and then we need to stir vigorously and immediately take half a litre of the stock solution, add to a five litre watering can fitted with a very coarse rose and fill with water. Well, that's a 10 litre watering can. So we'll take a whole litre out of that and put it in that. Um, and then that'll be apply the solution to an eighth of the soil area to be treated. So it's basically asking to divide the area into eighths. Uh, Peaks two and three until the whole area is treated and then water the treated area after application. This pack fills eight watering cans of five litres and treats up to 40 metres squared, 50 square yards. Also easily applied with recommended garden hose. You can put it in one of those like, adapters and spray it the lazy way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just open this pack up and dissolve it all in there. I've got a stick here as well next to me I can use to stir it all in. So there's this weird white material in here. So I'll zoom you guys in. There we go. Right. I thought this, this is, uh, don't tell the missus, but this is our uh, normal measuring jug from outside. I'm sure nematodes won't. Yeah, I'm sure. They, they might add a certain piquant flavor to whatever I'm cooking later. So 
just peel this stuff off here. I don't know why I'm looking at it. This thing's microscopic, but I thought I would. Uh, it's just human nature to have a good peer at whatever it is you're working with. So all of that goes in there. And then you throw your knife over there as well, like that. So this water, it, it, I think it's quite important the water is, uh, you know, not freezing cold, otherwise you could potentially kill them all at this, at this stage. So I'm just gonna stir all this up now. And what I'm gonna do is just water it straight into the surface um, of, the, uh, of the greenhouse in there, because um, the, the misting system has been on this morning anyway, so it's quite warm and humid in there. The ground's already wet. So I've worked out the square meterage of the greenhouse. It's 9.2 meters squared in there because it's a 12 and a half foot by eight foot greenhouse. So get all this stirred up. What I'm going to do is, so this is five, that's going to be 10 liters. So well, we'll stick to whatever it says anyway. So we'll take a half a liter of this there's half a litre of that. I just pour that straight into there, like that. And then what I'm going to do is just take it over to the water butt, which is over there, and just fill it up with the water butt. Now you need to make sure you use a coarse, a coarse rose. So one of these with big holes. This has got pretty big holes on it. Um, it's almost like it's in um, almost like a fine sawdust and obviously I think uh, it's got the potential to clog these holes up so the bigger the holes the better really so I'm going to fill this up just keeping an eye on the side of it till it fills up to five which is nearly there like that now I expect this um, I expect the water butt water to be at ambient temperature so if I have a look, I've actually got a wall thermometer up here, so it's 12 degrees centigrade, so it should be uh, plenty, uh, plenty warm enough for this. I'm going to put a stirring stick in it as well, because I'll probably agitate it again when we'll go over there. I'll pick you guys up and we'll uh, go over to the greenhouse. Okay, so there's a few things in here I can't easily move. One of them being the swamp cooler over here. But I've basically got everything else I can. I've also my misting system as well I can't really move. But I'm going to pick up these, um, these flagstones as I go as well. Um, I'll probably put two watering cans worth on this area because this is where I'm most want to And the rest of it I'm going to spread around the garden kind of evenly. So I'm just going to give the... Give the water in kind of stir up just to keep it agitated. And just start at the furthest point over here. And just watering it in. And hopefully this is gonna you can see my rose isn't quite coarse enough at the moment because what's happening is it's uh, slowing the flow down as it comes out. So one of those, a metal watering can with one of the, one of the um, uh, roses with the big holes on would be much better for this, I think. What I'm gonna do is just tilt these up one at a time. And I'm also gonna water underneath each one of these. Keep stepping over the mic in order to do this. probably get one more out of this. Not quite, nearly. And what we're going to have to do afterwards as well is water this stuff in. So you wait here, I'll go and fill another one of these up and uh, we'll come back and do the rest of the greenhouse.
Okay, so that's all watered in now. I've applied it, applied the rest, the, the inside of the greenhouse is done, and I've applied the rest of it to the outside, to the garden. And uh, just a quick note, what I, did, what I forgot to remember is, is this stuff's pet and child friendly as well. So because you're dealing with just basically a natural soil organism, you can let the dog straight out and uh, you don't have to worry about the kids eating soil, which they, they love to do. Um, and uh, I've just noticed inside the pack, if you open it up as well, there's a, you can actually, uh, there's an application schedule, so you can actually mark down when you did it uh, and then mark out if you get six weeks protection from using this stuff, when you next need to put some down. So um, I owe a big thank you to uh, Nematodes Direct. Thank you very much for letting me review this product. Um, and um, we'll have to do an update in a fortnight's time to see how we're getting on, to see whether or not I'm still getting bothered by slugs. So, uh, Thanks for watching. Uh, remember to uh, give us a comment, especially if you've used this stuff before and know anything about it or your uh, experience with it. And uh, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.